All right. Uh, welcome to the moderate set of videos. We'll be covering in these videos the sorts of things that you're going to need to know as you continue on in some of your different classes. Uh, we're going to cover things that you might see in some of your classes, but maybe not others. So a little bit more specialized things you can get by without for some uh, for some classes, but maybe not all of them. Uh, so what we're going to be talking about in this video is we're going to be still talking about linear regression. We're going to still be talking about ordinary least squares like we did in the last video, but we're going to be getting a little bit more fancy with it. We're going to be talking basically about how to structure regression formulas, right? So last time we talked about how to build a regression object. Uh, so for example, uh, using the same data from last time, I've already loaded in the foreign package and the stargazer package and the Wooldridge data that we, uh, the wage one data that we've been working with. And I'm running this uh, basic linear model that regresses wage on education, tenure, female, uh, and married, and then displays the results with Stargazer. So we can see sort of what that looks like. So what we're going to be doing in this video uh, is going a little bit beyond what we can do here. So here we've just taken the, uh, the, the, our left-hand side variable, our dependent variable, and we've regressed it on a list of control variables. Uh, but often there are other things that you might need to do, aside from just you know, putting in all the control variables, using the plus sign to add them all together. Because you know, what we have here is, is a regression formula. And that regression formula is this part in here, where we're saying that the wage uh, is a function of, it's distributed according to education, job tenure, gender, and marital status, right? That's what we're doing here. So we're gonna get some more complex versions of that. And let's go ahead and start uh, by uh, introducing squared terms. So it's pretty common in economics uh, and in other forms where you're, in other applications where you're using uh, linear regression to allow for a squared term. So for example, education. We have education in here uh, as a regressor because we think that higher levels of education might be associated with higher wages, right? Uh, however, we have it in there as a linear term. And what that means is that uh, we're, we're basically making the claim that going from four to five years of education is going to have the same effect on your wages as going from 11 to 12 years of education, which probably isn't true. Okay. So let's see if we can, you know, loosen that up a bit. Let's add a squared term, which will allow for a, uh, for the relationship between wage and education to follow a curve, right? A non, a, a parabola to be, per, to be precise. So the nice thing about doing this in R, uh, is that all we have to do is just add in a square term. We're going to do that with the I function. So when you add, so, so I, right, just the letter I, and then some parentheses, what I put in there is going to be a formula or a function of one of the variables that I'm interested in, okay? So if I put in here uh, education and I just square it, that is referring immediately to the square, to education squared. I don't need to create a new variable called education squared and then include that in the model. I can do it directly in the model. If I take this I term and I just plop it right in there, right? So now this is not just a regression of wage on education, tenure, gender, and marital status. It's, an, it's a regression on education, education squared, gender, marital status, and job tenure, okay? So let's go ahead and call this model four, and then let's look at the result with Stargazer. And we can see what that looks like, right? So we have education, and education squared. Be careful when interpreting them, right? That's the tricky thing when you get these nonlinear terms in there, uh, but just that's the sort of thing you'll be learning in class. I'm not gonna talk about it here. If you like, there's an older video on my channel uh, about interpreting interaction and squared terms. Uh, it's of course done in stata rather than R. Okay, so now we know how to put a squared term in there. What else can we do? Well, one other thing that is commonly done in regression models is to include interaction terms, okay? So again, right, let's go back to the, the model that we started with. Right, education, tenure, female, married, okay? Uh, let's call it model five now. And uh, one of the claims we're making here is you notice that there's that each of the variables is in there separately. So we're saying that the effect of an additional year of education is the same whether you are, say, a man or a woman, right? We, we're, we're, we're just, we're including education there by itself, we're including female by itself, but controlling for female does not tell us how the effect of education might differ across genders. So we want to do this, something like that, we'll need to include an interaction term. So including an interaction term is pretty easy to do. You're writing it out just as though you were writing out the regression equation by itself, right? And if we were writing out a regression equation with an interaction term, it would look something like this. It would look like y is equal to, you know, some intercept alpha plus beta one uh, times, say, education, uh, plus beta two times female plus beta three times 
education times female. Right? So all I gotta do is take this education times female part and put it in our regression equation. So I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna take education times female, stick it in here. Okay, let's go ahead and move that around so female is over there next to its buddies. All right. Um, now, actually when I include the, uh, so let's go ahead and run this. Notice how I actually took out education female by itself when I included this term, right? R knows that pretty much every time when you include an interaction term, you also want to include the variables by, this, by themselves. And so it will do that automatically. If you want to, for some reason, have it include the interaction term without the individual variables, instead of a star, uh, you will use a colon. So like see here in the regression we already ran, it has a, we, we didn't include education by itself or female by itself, but it included them by default because we had the interaction term. So here's education, here's the coefficient on female, and if we scroll down, here's the coefficient on education times female, right? Uh, if, I, if I include the colon up here in the regression equation itself, it will just include the interaction term, uh, but it will not include education or female by itself. So the star is usually what you want. Uh, it will include both the uh, variable and the interaction term, and the colon is just the interaction term. All right, so we've got squared terms. Uh, we've, we've got um, uh, interaction terms. Uh, let's look at other ways in which we can have variables enter our model. So we already did a squared term, right, which is just a transformation of the variable. We took a variable, we squared it, and then we included that square in our regression. But there are, of course, other transformations we could do as well. One thing you might have been thinking as I've been doing all these regressions is, hey, wait a minute, don't we usually use log wage instead of wage in a regression on the left-hand side? Yes, yes we do. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, in most statistics packages, this is the point where you would need to create a new variable called log wage, uh, and then you would need to include it in the regression. We don't need to do that. Just like with the I equation, uh, we can include, we can just put wage in a log function and it will work. So we're gonna use log wage instead of wage. Okay, this is gonna be our model, uh oh. It's gonna be our model seven. All I gotta do is take wage, put it in a log function, and now it will run using log wage instead of wage. Okay, so that's gonna change our coefficients a bit because now the interpretation of them has shifted. All right, another thing that we might wanna do for looking at different functional forms uh, is to include a set of dummies. Now this is a common thing that we do in economics where uh, you know instead of having a variable just in there as a, as a number, we need to include it as a set of dummies. Now there's a number of different reasons we might do this. For some variables, it doesn't really make sense to include it as a variable. Like let's say you wanted to regress wage and you wanted to control for the state somebody's in. Well, you can't just include state as a variable because what does that mean? Is Minnesota a 36 and uh, New York is a 25? Like that doesn't really make sense. They're not really numbers, they're just different states, they're categories. Uh, or you might have a, a variable that is a number, but you want to uh, have, it, have, it, uh, have dummies in there for the different levels of it. So that instead of it being linear, you're saying that the effect is the same at every level. Uh, or even a squared term, which is saying that it follows a parabola, you can get rid of the functional form assumption entirely. You can say, I don't know what shape it takes. It might be a line, it might be a, a parabola, it might be a cubic, I don't know. It's, I'm gonna make it be completely free. Uh, and so you can do that with a factor command. So we're going to basically do another transformation here uh, for model eight. And let's say we're still interested in education, but we want every single level of education to be treated separately. Okay. We don't want to impose any sort of function on it. Uh, so we're going to have a set of dummies for education. All we got to do is take education and put it through the factor function right here. And then this will treat education as a factor. And if you remember way back to the first or second video, we talked about the type of variable called a factor which is basically saying we have different levels of something uh, or we have different categories of something. The factor function here says, hey, recognize this variable as a factor, please, and give me a set of dummies instead of treating it as a number. By the way, if you just have a variable that's already being considered, that, that it's already a factor type variable in your data and you just include it, R will know what to do. It'll auto already treat it as a factor. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at this and we should get a set of dummies for every different level of education, which is exactly what we get. So here we're saying uh, that the coefficient on 
two years of education relative to zero, which is the excluded category. Again, go to your class on interpreting these sets of dummies um, is negative three. The coefficient on three is, is negative five and so on and so forth. So these are a set of dummies. So this variable right here is a binary variable. It's zero if you have any level of education other than six years. And it's equal to one if you have exactly six years of education. One last thing that I want to cover is that often in, uh, in economics, you'll have a regression model with lots of control variables. Now, as an aside, generally you want to keep the number of control variables kind of small. Throwing everything in as a control doesn't really work very well, doesn't have very good statistical properties. Often it will not actually answer the question that you want to answer. But in any case, let's say you have more variables than you really want to type out. All right. Now, uh, you might think, well, I have to type out every, the name of every single variable that I want to include. What if I have like 40 different variables that I want to have include in my model for some reason, right? That's a possibility. Uh, now, there is a shortcut for doing this in R, and it's just the period. Uh, so let me show you something. Let me write out a, a regression model. So we're going to say model 9 is linear model. It's going to be wage and then period. So what this will do, what the period does, is it says include everything as a control that I haven't already mentioned. Okay, so in this case, I've mentioned the wage variable. And so doing this would regress the wage variable on every other variable in the data set. Okay, uh, now that's probably too many variables, right? You can see the wage one has 24 variables in it, which is more than we really want to do. Let's say we don't really have, we want to include 24 coefficients, but we want to include a whole bunch of them. Well, all we got to do is create a new data frame that only has the variables in it that we're interested in. So let's say that we are, we're looking at this and we're not interested in all the variables, but we want, let's say, everything uh, up to, let's see here, up to the west variable. All right. So uh, I want all this stuff at the front. So there's a couple things that I could do. One thing that I could do uh, is I can use the subset command, which we already used, to select all the variables that I want, and then use the period to include all those variables in my regression. So I can say subset. Uh, or I'm going to say um, uh, regression data. Okay, I'm going to make that a subset of the wage one data, and I want to select some variables. Uh, I would like to select, uh, what do we got in here? All right, that's enough. Let's say that that's enough. So we'll create this subset of data, uh, and then we'll use that data set in the uh, regression. So instead of wage one, I'm going to use my reg data, and I use the period there, and that's going to include everything as our regressors. So you can see it's including every single variable that we inc included there. Now, you know, this didn't actually save me any time because I still had to type out all the variable names. Uh, another way that you could do this is use indexing to get a bit of a shortcut on your on your on your on your on your uh, selecting. So in this case, I wanted to include the first certain number of rows of data or a certain number of columns of data. So I want two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight. I wanted the first eight columns so I can do that. Uh, I can say my reg data is going to be wage one. But I just want the first eight columns, so I'm going to want all the rows, so comma, and then one to eight. Uh, and then I can do the exact same thing, and I should get the exact same result. There we go. Now, by the way, you can combine this. Keep in mind that it includes everything as a regression that you haven't already mentioned. So you can include stuff as well. Uh, so let's say that I want to include an interaction term in this data set, in this regression right here. Let's say I want that interaction between education and gender. So I can do that. All I have to do is take the exact same model and add on the, the uh, interaction. It's not, there's nothing wrong with that, right? It's still going to include it. So I want education times female uh, plus period. And then the period will then include everything that I haven't already mentioned. that. There we go. So that should include that interaction term we talked about, uh, as well as the variables by themselves, and then everything we didn't already mention that was in that subset of data set. All right. 
that's how we can get started on, on constructing uh, more complex regression formulas. The nice thing about this is that this will not just work with the OLS command, this will work with anything that requires a regression formula. So when we get into other kinds of regressions, probit, logit, instrumental variables, blah, 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 all the different kinds of regressions you can imagine, they will all work with these kinds of things where we can create more complex regression formulas as you need them. All right, that's it. Uh, see you in the next video.